Libation, ENT. I just want to welcome back um, all of our viewers to another special Libation Conversations. We have some uh, very special guests with us today. Um, I'm DJ Strong reporting live here from 3AM Studios. This episode is powered by 3AMstudios.biz. So, you know, just check us out online for any of your production needs. If you need any jingles, any um, recordings done here locally in the Atlanta area, please check out the website, 3AMstudios.biz. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce our panel and special guests. Um, today with us, we have the very talented Shy Shy. She is our Intermix Radio live DJ, and she's also our Hip Hop Inquirer correspondent. Um, we also have our Livation West Coast affiliate musician and fellow producer, Scrap Loke, with us here today. We also have the one and only accomplished author, music executive, and um, really good friend of mine, a business partner, L.A. Jackson. L.A., are you there? Hey, DJ Strong. Thanks for having me, brother. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, man, as always, man. Just a blessing to be here and uh, have another great episode um, with our special guest today. With that, with, with that being said, man, I'm going to let you take it over for a second. Okay, well, uh, first and foremost, hello to all of our guests. It's always a pleasure to see you guys on board and chat with you and interact. Uh, our special guest today, though, is just an incomparable artist, producer, arranger, a keyboard player, great guy. I've known this guy since I think like 1984 when I was working with CBS Records who distributed the music of the Isley Brothers and soon to be Isley Jasper Isley. This man is responsible for major hits of the Isley Brothers and one of the biggest records that was ever played on radio, Caravan of Love. I want to introduce Mr. Chris Jasper. Hello everybody. Uh, very, very happy to be with you all. Hey, thank you for hanging out with us today, Chris. Um, LA made a very, very good point. I'm going to get right to it. You have so many accolades. We can sit here for about two years and still not cover everything that you've done and everything that you've been a part of. Um, on behalf of myself and the rest of our Livation family, I just want to give you a big round of applause. Thank you. A big round of applause for all of your musical contributions man that you've brought to the world thank you thank you know you. I, you know we really livation for the viewers out there livation equals the vibration of life through music that's l-y-v-a-t-i-o-n and uh, that's a whole nother episode but basically i'm gonna get right into it chris because i know everyone's time is valuable today um la brought up a very very good point caravan of love personally man that is one of my favorite songs for a couple reasons. The first reason is whenever I hear it, it takes me back to a time when I can remember on Saturday mornings, when I would hear that song playing, it would wake me up. That meant I need to get up, clean my room, go in the living room, help my mother and father clean up the rest of the house. <laughs> Cause it was just that kind of vibe on the weekend. And that was a great way to start our weekend. So I just want to thank you for that. You know what I'm saying? What, what year was that? Was that the 80s? 85. 85. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I had I had to get my butt up and go make some things happen. Or it was going to be a different caravan going on. The one was going to be the love of all. But um, <laughs> just reflecting on the music right now, um, one, of the, one of the things that I wanted to ask you in the choir, how do you feel? How does songs like that, how are they significant right now during these days and times? You know, I think, you know, songs like Caravan of Love, um, I meant it to be significant for all time because I wanted it to be a song that people could connect with right away um, because, you know, things go in cycles. You know, events in history go in cycles. And Caravan of Love addresses something very basic, and that, that is, it's something in scripture. You know, when Christ returns, you know, there's going to be peace on earth. You know, we'll be living in a world of peace in a day when everyone is free. You know, we'll bring the young and the old. You know, won't you let your love flow from your heart? That's one of the verses, one of the bridges in the song. 
and it's it's taken from scripture so you know um scripture always applies to every period of time and that's why i wanted to base this base the song on the bible and then you know i said there's a line i say two times in the song you know i'm your brother i'm your brother don't you know you know <clears throat> I, I said it twice because it's, it's it is significant and that a lot of times you know we don't realize that we are all brothers we came from you know two people that were created you know adam and eve they were the first people that were created and if you go back far enough we're all related you know and that's, I want to put that in a song, and, and I'm glad that the video captured that, you know, the yeah. video Caravan of Love. You know, you had the, the guy that looked like he was from Sweden, and then you had the guy that looked like he was from Africa, yeah. and they were looking at each other, you know, and saying, I'm your brother, I'm your brother, don't you know? You know, and, and that caught the sentiment that I had when I wrote the song, you know what I mean? And um, I wanted people to get that message, because... Um, you know, it was important to me. It was important to me to bring, you know, yeah. God's principles into my music. And, um, you know, Caravan was a, a great song. I mean, it was bigger than I even thought it would be, you know. I knew it was yeah. good at first, but when it took off like it did, you know, and people started covering it. There's so many covers of it. It's like all over the world now. Well, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a writer and musician myself, and... I know we get inspirations from, you know, from the Most High always. And you said you you included some of your, some of your um, principles into the music. The first verse of that song, the lyrics are, to me are very very powerful. Yeah. What was the what was the inspiration? Like where were you when you wrote that? Like so, what's going on? You know, let's talking about fighting the, the good fight of faith. You know, it's so like ready for the time of your life, uh, time to stand up and fight. It's all right, you know, fighting that good fight of faith, you know, take a caravan to the, to the motherland, you know. Um, it's all talking about, you know, the place where mankind was born is so neglected and torn apart. You know, going back to the beginning, you know, uh, that's, that's kind of what it's about. And, and it's like I said, a lot of the lyrics are based in the scripture. Mm -hmm. And fighting that good fight of faith, that's what it's talking about. And, um, it's it, like I said, it's a special song for me because I was starting to really read the Bible more and understand the scriptures more. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's when my calling began was right, right before I wrote that song. And um, I was just so happy to get all of that out into one song, the, the, the lyric, because I, I felt the music was, was strong. It was a, a, a nice musical hook, you know, the song, the, the track sounded great, you know, yeah. but I wanted to, you know, have a message that everybody could connect with. And uh, that, that definitely was a powerful message. And I mean, it, it, it's still, you know, during these days of protests, songs like that, man, I think, well, you know, they say music calms the savage beast. Yeah. And it brings people to a certain frequency. And I feel like that's one of those songs right there that, you know, if you play it for a mass amount of people, it would change people's emotions. Oh, yeah. You it, know? It has. I'm, I've, I've gotten messages from people, you know, now that I'm on, uh, you, know, you know, Facebook and, you know, the, the, the internet and everything, people mm -hmm. send me messages like that and say, you know, some of the songs that I've done, you know, have really affected their lives, you know, in a positive way. Yeah. You know? and, and, and that's what I'm about, the positive statements in music. Uh, I think that's my calling is to put those positive statements in my music uh, so that people can maybe maybe somebody can have some uh, answers to questions they might have about life, you know, how to live as a Christian in this world, you know, things like that. Uh, and I think that's what my calling is. Okay. Well, hey, man, we're glad you had that calling and you answered. Trust me. <laughs> yes, you did. And another interesting thing, you know, I mentioned all the years he was with, uh, Chris was with the Isleys and doing stuff like that. Um, it's just, it, it, it was like a no brainer when I was talking to Chris a couple weeks ago and he was like, Hey, I got this new album coming out. It's funny that we're connecting at this time, just before I dropped the album, uh, the, 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 the album title is the same title as one of the Izzy brothers biggest hits for the love of you. And I thought it was amazing to swing back around like that, Chris, and, and, and also give another spin of the same song. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how that came about? Uh, yeah, um, 
uh, this past September, uh, my son got married. And uh, for the wedding, he wanted me to do another version of For the Love of You because they like that song. He said, but, you know, Dad, can you do another version you know, for, for the wedding? And I said, uh, okay, let me work on it, see what I can come up with. And um, I, I started to work on it and, you know, change a few things in it. A lot, I really liked it. And then when I did it at the wedding, you know, people really responded really well. Big, you know, big ovation, you know. And I said, okay, this can be the beginning of the cover album <laughs> that a lot of people have been asking me to do, you know. And so... Um, I, I, I redid a couple of other songs from the catalog when I was with the six member group. Um, I once had your love can't let go, uh, go for what you know. I did another version of that, uh, and then I went back and did some of my you know fav favorite artists. Uh, Marvin Gaye, he was a big influence on me. I did God is Love, uh, Sam Cooke's Nothing Can Change This Love. I did one of him because I used to sing his songs all the time when I was when I was coming up. So it was a, a really a great experience to be able to do one of his songs, too. Uh, and I did a couple other favorites, too. And um, this album is an album of covers, but it's a lot of new music in it. You know, I like to put my own spin on things and put new elements in there and make it sound, you know, different. And uh, it was really a fun album to work on. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the new music. Scrap, you got something you want to add? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say, first of all, I just want to say how much of an honor it is to be on this forum with you, uh, uh, Chris uh, Jasper. I'm, again, legend, in my eyes, a legend, and in many people's eyes, so thank you for, for taking this time with us. Um, Caravan of Love was the picnic song, by the way, for us. Uh, family outings, I remember it, instantly I started thinking about the picnics when families would get together at the parks. You know, we'd be at Kenneth Hahn Park or or uh, Exposition Park and just family uh, food, the smell of food in the air and, and that song bringing people together. So um, so thank you for that. And how fortunate is it to have a, a, a father who you could just be like, Pops, uh, could you redo this classic for me for my wedding? You know, what I mean, <laughs> like, can you redo this this worldwide classic for me? Well, um, yeah, it was something because when I, I did it originally, you know, I was happy with that person too, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, something a little, because you know, I, I just changed the mood a little bit, slowed it down a little bit, you know, gave more emphasis to the backgrounds, you know, and made them featured a little bit more. And that freed up the lead vocal to do other things, you know? So, um, yeah, man, I mean, it was it was a good experience. I like doing that though. I like going back and, you know, say revisiting something that I've done already because it's kind of a, I'm, I'm trained as a composer and, and, and all that. So it's kind of a challenge to restructure something that I've already done. It's, it's kind of fun, you know, for me. I, I love that we can do that with music too. Very few aspects of our life can we go back and restructure in a way that we want to do. So music is a beautiful example of how we can go back and kind of uh, revisit things and give them a whole new, new light, you know? Um, but I want to ask you, um, so when I listen to songs like Caravan of, of Love, I think, uh, and you and you now you're verifying that there was uh, such a strong spiritual uh, a component to the creation of that song. I'm just curious, like, when you're creating a song like that, are you, because it seems so appropriate for the time we're in right now. Were you able, were you seeing something ahead of time uh, when you were creating that song? Or were you, were you, were you looking beyond the horizon? I just want to know what the inspiration was in terms of how you create music that ends up being absolutely relevant so many decades after it had been created? Well, you know, if, if, if you do read the scriptures, you know, we, we know now that we're in the end time period, you know, and the end time period is described in, in, in the Bible. So if 1985 and to, to the present isn't really a long period of time in the biblical sense, you know what I mean? So unless Christ intervenes, this, there, there will be unrest until he comes back. You see what I mean? There, the, so uh, we've been in the end time for the last 2000 years. So of course it's gonna be relevant, you know what I mean? A song you know, that comes from Christ, from Christ's message is gonna be relevant for the end time period, no matter what, time you know what year you in in that end time period so uh 
That's one thing we have to realize is that we're in that period of time. Now how, do, now, how do we make it better for ourselves? We make it better by living by God's principles. That's what will, you know, make that period more pleasant, you know, before it comes back. But if we rely on our own understanding, it's not going to get better. <laughs> you see, he gave us the key to how to make it better. He, you know, he, he, he said, the truth shall, shall make you free. His principles will make it better not anything that we can come up with. And I think, I think that's the struggle mankind has, you know, even back far as, you know, Cain and Abel. You know, Cain was the one who said, hey, you know, I'll bring him what I think is good. I'll bring him an offering that I believe is good. God already instructed him <laughs> about what he wanted. Now, Abel brought what God wanted. See, and God accepted it. <laughs> but Cain, he brought what he thought. Was, was, was the right thing. Mm -hmm. and I said, no, that's, not, that's not what I asked for. You see, so ever since then, man has been trying to do things his way. And that's the kind technology is a representation of that. I mean, not just going by what you're saying, it seems like technology could be a representation of our own understanding because it tends to stifle the spiritual progression in, in some sense. It, 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 again, it's, it's technology all in, it, in and of itself is not a bad thing, but the use of it is the thing that we have, we have to, you know, do it God's way. If we don't use it in a positive, you know, way, it becomes destructive. You see what I mean? Anything we can come up with, we have to use it in a positive way. And then, you know, that's the, that's the struggle mankind is having. You know, I'll do it. And, and the Bible says, rely not on your own understanding. Right. You know, Rely on what God has said, because those things work. The commandments, that works. If we all kept the commandments, that would work. You know, that is how we love God and we love our neighbor, is by keeping the commandments, and the scripture says so. This is how we know we have the love of God, that we keep his commandments. So, see, that's the whole struggle. It sounds simple, but if you examine, you know, the history of mankind, it hadn't been that's, so simple. <laughs> it's, it, that's what it's been. We, you know, got, man thinks he can do it his own way and, you know, and be successful, you know, in the long run. The goat versus the sheep, basically. But it won't. But, but yeah, it, it won't work. God has, all, has given us the blueprint of how to live and how to live in peace and harmony and have the right, you know, attitude towards everything. That's that's the answers. But we, but we as a people, as, a, as the world, reject him you know we say you know at one hand yeah we love god but we reject him by what we do the deeds of our, re our rejections you see and we that's a kind that we can't live that way we have to agree with him and then live like he said that's the that's the answer to our problems not not saying okay god we love you and then but you hate your hate your neighbor over here you know the scripture says, how can you love God who you have not seen and hate your brother who you see daily? You know, it said, that, you know, that, that doesn't work. So that's, that's, I think that's the lesson we have to learn is that God has the answers. He has the right answers. He told us. He gave it to us. Now, what do we do with it? You see, that's, that, that's, that's the, I guess, the dilemma. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. That's a big catch-22 there. Hey, um, Shy, I was just wondering, um, in listening to everything that's been going on so far, uh, you're the only uh, female in the group. I, I, I was just curious, as a, a, a woman and as a mother, are you affected differently uh, by Chris's music? Uh, are your thoughts any different or do do we all see as men and women the same thing? Do we still feel the same things from uh, the music that uh, Chris Jasper has put out over the last uh, decades? Um, That's definitely a good question. Um, how you doing, Mr. Jasper? Nice to meet you. Very happy to you know meet you and be able to speak with you. Um, I'm gonna get to your question. One second, LA. I just wanted to say my mom is gonna be very jealous that I'm talking to you today. So I'm gonna rub that in. <laughs> she loves your music. Um, but as far as 
you know, how the music affects me as a mother. Um, I'm an artist as well. And, you know, so I make music. So I'm on both sides of the coin. Um, and I would love to work with you, just, just so you know. <laughs> um, but I think that as a parent, it does definitely make me cautious about the music that I put out, um, the energy. So I would say listening to his music, I know that it does give you an energy. It gives you a message. It gives you a mindset. So I think that, yeah, it affects me differently just being a parent. But I think that young people should listen to that era of music because we need to get back to having love in the music and respect in the music and messages like he said, instead of saying, drive up, pow, 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 lay your brother down, it's saying, hey, you my brother, let's put everything together and make it better for for everybody versus let's kill each other, let's take drugs, let's call our women, you know, let's demean our melanated women, but then uplift women of you know, other races. So I just think the music is, um, I think the music is um, definitely, definitely needs to be better. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I have a question uh, for you, Chris. Um, with you coming from the era of music that you have come from. And then I know you, do you cringe every time you listen to music nowadays? When you turn on the radio, do you, does your spirit cringe? Just I mean, to see where music has gone. I, I'm like, um, I'm surprised at, the, at some of the lyrics that I hear, you know? Um, because I, I've, I've heard people say, well, you know, I'm not a role model. You know, I'm just an entertainer, right. you know? Right. But that goes along with the territory. I mean, if you're if you're if you're making music, and especially if you're successful at it, people are going to notice what you do. It's obviously going to influence somebody, you know, somewhere. And if you're out there, you know, saying those type of lyrics that, that you said, you know, you're encouraging violence, or you, you know, you're degrading women, or something like that, you, it's going to influence somebody's mind, and they're going to live their life like that sometime. Because I've heard I've heard people say, man, you know. A, a song that I did affected their life and affected the way they live. And, you know, um, faith comes by hearing. You know, if you want to stop right there, the scripture goes on. But if, if it's negative things they're hearing, that's what their faith is going to be based on. That's what their life is going to be based on. You know, but, but we want, I prefer faith comes by hearing by the word of God. You see, a good thing. I mean, I think if people keep hearing good messages, it's going to affect their lives in a good way. And I agree with you. I, you know, some of, some of the things I hear, I'm surprised that people even want to put that in a record, you know? I mean, because, you know, to get a hit record, you don't have to put, you don't have to degrade people or, or use foul language or, you know, say that you're, you know, some kind of gangster or something, you know? <laughs> gangster what? I mean, come on. You know what I mean? What, what, what is the purpose of that? Is it is it to create... A society that wants to do that, those things, right. what's your purpose? You know what I mean? We already know some conditions are bad in some places. We know everybody knows this. But why but why dwell on the negative? Why don't why don't you give some answers? You know, give some solutions. Because that's what people need. People need solutions. You know, they need so, that to the problem. So I, I was what I was suggesting to a person who wants to do that, hey, put some answers in your because I tried to. I try to put some solutions in my music rather than just, you know, stating the obvious. Do you think um, it's a bigger picture with the whole music? Do you think it's bigger than we think? Like it's just the music labels or is it like a government initiative? Is it bigger than we think? I'm glad you asked that question because the whole uh, gangster thing, you know, that, that, that kind of persona, that was engineered, you know, that was engineered. That was, that was engineered for the purpose. And, 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 and this was, this came out in an article by a, a record executive who was right in the middle of that uh, uh, engineering uh, meeting. There was a meeting about it. And they said, okay, a lot of companies have investments in, in the private prison system. Right. So the, the purpose was to keep this stuff going for the purpose of having people incarcerated. 
You see, because they know they knew the power of music. They know if they say something negative, that somebody is going to get into somebody's head, and they're going to say, "Hey, man, I'm a I'm a live the life, you know, of a street person. I'm a, I'm gonna be out here in the street. I'm gonna I'm gonna make my money that way." And then they end up, you know, it's only two two destinations when you do that: is is prison, and is you know, checking out. And so it was engineered. I, it, it's, and he said, he said after that meeting, he this one person said he left the meeting, but he said after the meeting, that's all he started to hear. Because you know, rap didn't start off that way. It didn't start off that way. But that's all he started to hear after that meeting was. So it was engineered, and I, and and I think sometimes we need to look further into what's actually going on. There's a lot more sometimes than is actually going on. Sometimes things are, are planted, seeds are planted. Things just don't happen out of the blue. You know, things just don't happen from nowhere. Some something is always started and initiated someplace. That's with some individuals, a group of individuals, or some committee or something. It just doesn't happen like that. And and all this and all the negativity we heard didn't just happen out of the blue. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's know? funny that you said that too, Chris, because just yesterday on the radio, I heard an advertisement for an upcoming, I think it's a TV one unsung or a TV one special about how go go music has been suppressed intentionally by companies because they didn't want that thought, that energy to come out about pro-black and everything so record companies have suppressed it and that's about to come out i think next week you know on tv one yeah a lot of things are done because of money see it was profitable it was profitable to have this negative stuff out there why because it, even large corporations had investments in the in the prison systems is that criminal is huh? that is, well, is it's, that it's 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 almost it's like it's like on the edge of criminality because they they're not they're not actually uh, uh, conspiring to to for a person to commit a crime that would be criminal if you were to say, if you were to say go to somebody and say hey look you go I, I want you and a couple of your friends to go commit a crime you would be cons you would be guilty of conspiracy but if you're just, you know, being negative and by that influence is making a person more likely to commit a crime, it's like on the edge. It's, it's like a gray area and it's, 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 no, it's no criminal statute for that. Last question. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got one more. I just want to add one thing to that. If so, and if it could be proved that it is a conspiracy, do you think that that's something that African-Americans can bring up like to a you know grand jury or something like that but no that's too far it's like i said it's not there's no criminal statute that directs that that, that points to that you see that's this is this is this is why i went back to law school is <laughs> because certain things if, if if you're gonna indict someone it has to be a, a something on the books a law on the books that they're violating if there's no law on the books, then you, you can't indict a person. You know, every bad action is not a crime. Okay, every bad action is not a crime. The things that are a crime are the things that violate criminal statutes. See, that's different. Like if a person walks up to you and says, hey man, I don't like you, you know, I don't like what you're wearing today, you know, uh, you're ugly and so forth and so forth, right? That's a bad act, but there's no statute <laughs> that says that's a crime. You see, every every bad action is not something you can you know sue somebody over or you know have them arrested over. So, but but like I said, there's there's ways that things that were, were engineered. You know, but I, I I can tell you that some judges have been indicted for you know. Uh, uh, um, their bad acts as far as you know how they sentence people because there, there are things that govern the the judicial uh branch 
that they can't violate, right? So uh, I think a couple of judges were uh, uh, indicted and, and, you know, prosecuted because they unfairly uh, sentence people to longer terms, you know, uh, when it didn't fit, when it didn't fit. So that, you know, that's something that people can look into because there are statutes that govern judges, you know, and how, and how they uh, sentence people. But uh, a lot of things, you have to understand, a lot of things that go on are not just coming out of the blue. You know, people have to understand that. Like a lot of the unrest that's going on today, there is, there is a bigger picture that people are missing. And that is, there's, there's, there's elements in this country that want to change America into something else other than the democracy that we've all, you know, been experiencing for all our lives. There's a socialist communist movement. I think we lost Chris. What a time to get frozen too. Like what a time for them to wow. cut it. <laughs> this is maybe, maybe they're watching Chris. too. Hey, let's that, um let's go ahead and uh let's try to get LA, let's try to get Chris back in the room for him. Okay. Um, um wow. but yeah, he's bring, he's bringing up yeah, he's bringing up some really valid points and you know, this is just one example of control. 